Okay, so this part's gonna be um, the review for the magnetism benchmark. Um, it will include some information we just talked about and then also a few more items that I've included here. So this first question is, how does the image Im demonstrate that like poles repel? So we're looking at this image and we can see south to south is facing each other in this picture and north is facing away. So same sides are towards each other and magnetism and, electric and electrostatics say that opposites attract and same repel. So the same poles are going to repel each other. And we can see that in this picture because if you follow the um, iron filings, they swoop away from each other, okay? So they don't go towards each other and curve like these do. So see how north, south, these all curve towards each other. They curve from north to south. Here, we don't see that. We don't see a curve here. We see this shooting away, almost like a diamond in the middle, if you can see that. This shows us that we have a repelling happening. So even if we couldn't see one of these two magnets, we could tell which way it was facing because we can see that these two sides are repelling each other. So if one of these two was like covered, you could still tell which was north and south because it's repelling it, each other here. All right. What types of materials affect a magnetic field? So you have nine items to, I'm sorry, 11 items to sort into either magnetic or non-magnetic. So for example, plastic, is non-magnetic and cobalt is magnetic. There are five items on this list that are magnetic and there are six that are non-magnetic. So you're going to sort those into the correct the correct spots. Um, if you need to refer back to the gizmo slab for um, to remind you, go for it. Here's another little extra tip. Um, Paper and wood are both cellulose. So if you know one of those two, you know the other one. How could you use the iron filings method to compare the strengths of the north poles of two magnets? Well, a stronger magnet is going to attract more iron filings and have denser lines at the end of the magnet. So you could do that to compare them. Next question, a strong magnet in a junkyard can lift a car. What does this tell you about the relative strength of magnetic and geographic um, gravitational forces on a car? So this is pretty interesting. So we have, um, let me see, I haven't used this rectangle feature yet. Let's see how this works. And pen, okay. So um, in a junkyard, you have a electromagnet that's on a crane. And when they turn on the electricity, it generates a magnetic field, which lifts the car upward. Downward is the pull of gravity on the car. So this is G. Now, if the magnet lifts the car, that means it has a stronger force than the downward force of gravity on the car. So that gives us a pretty quick answer that the magnetic field is stronger than the gravitational field. Now you could have a magnet that's weaker than gravity and wouldn't pick up the car, but if it picks up the car, then you know that the magnetic field is definitely stronger in that situation. Okay. Why are iron atoms so strongly affected by magnetic fields? because they're ferromagnetic. They have um, the proper electron spins to be magnet. Every iron atom is a magnet. Um, collectively together though, if they're all going the same direction, they create a strong magnet as well. But individual atoms are also magnetic just by themselves. So they're definitely affected by magnetic fields because they're a magnet, right? So a magnet's gonna be affected by a magnetic field. Okay. Why does a very strong magnet attract both poles of a weak magnet? The answer to this is kind of strange. So a strong magnet can magnetize something that's not even a magnet. So it can take something that has the um, magnetic domains all wonky and it can force it into all being aligned to create a temporary magnet. And so 
if you have a weak magnet, essentially what you have is you have a magnetic field that's kind of scrambled. Like some of them are going the right way. Some of them are off to the side or going the wrong way. So they're not all working together. Some are pushing the opposite direction. So when you have a strong magnet, it basically just overpowers the weak magnet and forces it to attract. So if I took a magnet, like one of my old magnets, it was all dinged up and dropped a billion times, and I took a really strong magnet, it would attract to both sides of that magnet. Even though if I were to take that weak magnet, I could determine like a north and a south, but it's not very strong. And so if I take a strong magnet to it, it'll just override that and just kind of force it to um, magnetize in the direction of the strong magnet. For magnets like poles repel each other and unlike poles do what? So like poles repel, unlike poles should attract each other. The source of all magnetism is, now this is a little tricky, so tiny bits of iron. That sounds right. Sometimes Magnetism, there are tiny bits of iron that cause magnetism, that's true. Tiny domains of aligned atoms. Yeah, there are domains of aligned atoms that create magnetism. Um, you remember this one from our last, our last lecture, small lodestones. Those are just rocks that they found that um, in Greece 2,000 years ago that were magnetic, that attracted um, iron objects. So they were magnets. But the source of all magnetism is at the atomic level. And at the atomic level, the electrons are moving. They're going around the nucleus and they're spinning on their axis, the same way that the earth spins on its axis and it also goes around the sun. The motion of those electrons is what magnetism is. And these two are just the result of that motion of electrons. So all the other three rely on the motion of electrons, which makes that the answer. Almost to the end here. A strong magnet lifts a paper clip. Compared with the force the magnet exerts on the clip, the force the clip exerts on the magnet is, now, it's a little bit tricky, right? You're thinking, oh, it's the strong magnet. But remember Newton's third law, equal and opposite reaction. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction force. So however hard the magnet pulls on the paper clip, the paper clip pulls just as hard on the magnet. So it would be the same. It's always the same. Magnet A has twice the field strength of magnet B. So this is like a strong magnet and a weak magnet. When brought close together, the magnet that pulls harder on the other is, mm, don't be tricked, don't be tricked. Both forces are equally strong. When we're talking about a pair of forces, in the case of um, two magnets or two charges um, or two, two masses with the gravity, um, equal and opposite forces. The magnetic domains in a magnet produce a weaker magnet when the magnet is what? We talked about this one. I told you the story of my daughter dropping the container of cupcakes and how they went from all organized to like all cattywampus. Um, the same thing actually happens when you heat a magnet. Um, heating a magnet causes molecular motion. So the faster molecule, the smaller, the faster atoms move, the more they become erratic. And so if you heat a magnet, you will also demagnetize it. So there's two ways you could ruin a magnet. It's both of these right here. And then we have, um, let's see, did I skip a question? No, do, 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 do. here we go. Um, magnetic domains occur mainly for materials composed of what? So carbon is non-magnetic, copper is non-magnetic, and silver is non-magnetic. Iron, cobalt, and nickel are the three main um, common elements that are magnetic. You can also refer to them as being ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic. Um, but these three are not magnetic. Okay, so that's the end of the little, the second video. Um, I found this really cool website that goes into a bit more detail about 
magnetism and how all of that's formed here. Some pretty cool images showing the magnetosphere and how it shields the earth and solar wind. And this is like a little animated thing here. Um, and then the, the, magnet, the um, magnetic variation, it talks about how, um, we, let's see here, magnetic poles, um, the position of the poles and where they used to be. Here's two different maps. One is 2000, one is 1700s. And discussions of how that field varies and based on the number of years and potentially when the magnetic field reversal will occur again. So it's all got a, quite a lot of information here. If any of that sounds appealing, you'd like to take a better look at that, be my guest. Um, I think you find it quite interesting. Um, and so that is the end of the video. Feel free to rewatch any parts of this video to be able to answer the questions. And of course, you can ask in class as well any questions that come up while you're working on this assignment. And happy studying.